Hello, today we are talking about Material UI Dialogues and React Hooks. As you can see from last time, we have our task dialog here, and there are a couple things I didn't finish last time, like adding new tasks and editing tasks. And as you can see, the Add New Task button opens up a dialog, but there is nothing defaulted for status or assignee. So we're gonna be working on that today, adding some new features, and yeah, let's get started. So you can see when I try to save, there are a few bugs because I just didn't implement saving on the new attributes I added last time. Also, this is zoomed in now so you could see it better without me having to edit it. This is the actual size of the app. I browse Material UI dialog documentation and just wanted to show you the full width prop here, which I use. Not the full screen dialog, the full width prop. As you can see, you can only set the max width to the specified sizes here, so I need to set to a custom pixel width, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Of course, we've got some other props here, like whether the dialog is open, the on-close callback, and so forth. Setting the width of the Material UI dialog requires you to set the full width prop and then the max width prop to one of the breakpoint values like small, medium, etc. If you want to use a custom pixel value, you have to override the class with your own max width CSS. Here is where I wrap the dialog with styled components to create my own dialog CSS override where I set the max width to 780 pixels. This is where Material UI is pretty inconvenient. Sometimes I'd rather just use styled components uh, to set these styles rather than the make styles hook. Next, I scroll through my dialogue to show you the various dialogue components like dialogue content, dialogue actions, and dialogue title. These are pretty self-explanatory containers and I show you what those elements correspond to here. So for existing tasks, this is where I conditionally render the task dialog based on whether a task ID is selected. Here's where I use a render prop in the dialog to tell the dialog to render this button above the dialog. This will keep the open close state management within the dialog component itself. This just makes it easier to move around the dialog without having to specify the state management in the parent class. You can also just specify what you want to trigger the opening of the dialog like I do here with the add new task button. And here's the callback where I set the dialog open. So I forget exactly how I set task ID on the task table parent, so I search for about five minutes and realize that when I click on the row, I push the task ID onto the history as you could see here. Then using React Router's use params hook, I pull the task ID off the URL, and that's how I know to show the dialog when I click on a task. This is also great because you can just load the application on the task URL and it will automatically open up the dialog. Now I look at this scratch code I've written here and decide it's time to refactor to clean this up. What I'm gonna do now is instead of declaring each attribute in the task dialog and using a custom React hook for each one, I'm just gonna simply use one React hook for setting the whole data object. This has the benefit of being really easy to save the data in the dialog because we're only storing the local state in one variable, data, rather than a bunch of attributes separately like this. I also declare default task data so I know what to set in the dialog when there is no current task selected. I fall into the trap of trying to create separate setters for each attribute, but instead opt to just make one function, setAtcher, which we can use to set any key and value on my data. I really like to implement my own form behavior here and not rely on something like Formic. I then also create a getter, even though I could have just accessed the data attribute itself, but I like this better. I realize now I will always have data, so checking falsy data is not good enough to know whether I am in edit or add mode. I write a quick solution here, but I end up refactoring this to a separate variable later as this approach doesn't work when I set default keys in the data object. I 
I introduce a few errors here, one being when I dispatch, I just have to spread the data object over and then merge an ID onto the object. Since ID is also undefined, I have to get it off of the data if it already exists. Now I also notice that the assignee field is undefined. This is because I forgot to get the name attribute on the assignee. This introduces another error when there is no assignee on the task, which I resolve by adding an assignee name for default tasks, which I simply call unassigned. I also set a default task status here. I notice that when I create a new task, edit task shows at the top. This is because my earlier check was not good enough now that we have new keys on our new task. So I create a check called new task here, which simply can tell the task is new by whether there is an ID on it. I don't see my new task added, so I go and update the save handler to have my new task check, which properly calls the add dispatch action. Success, the new task is added, but there is no assignee name. And also when I click on the task, I get an error. The final bug fix is in my Redux selector. I just need to make sure that where I assign the assignee to a person from my people slice, I use the default assignee when there is none. This basically creates a mock person that will be shared among other tasks that don't have an assignee. I import that and use it in my task dialog where I have defined the default task data. This should really be imported from the task slice or somewhere else, but it is fine here for now. So you can now see the unassigned person is there in my table. My task editor is getting closer to being completed. Next time we'll update the toast component to show the correct messages after we edit and add tasks. Thank you for watching. Please check the description for the links to this project if you want to explore the code further. And I will see you next time.